carry athletic strengths into an art form where there is no way for it to go. In other words, sitting on your, laying on your, on your back supine and putting a set of barbells, or like we did today, have a young lady stand on your tummy, I think this is not the way to go because this brings in isometrics. In other words, muscles always get small when they contract. They shorten. By that, I don't mean to get small. It's just simply they shorten, which would be better terminology. When you have isometrics, you, you look at a weightlifter's arm and he does that, you, you're seeing bulges all over there, you know. And um, um, in order for the abdominal region to become hard, the diaphragm must contract downward. Now, the diaphragm is way up here by the ziphoid process, a little bone at the base of the sternum. In other words, there's no diaphragm in the tummy region. It's up here. And uh, it is the sole muscle in opposition to the anterior abdominal wall. If you contract the abdominal muscles, they go in. If you contract the diaphragm, because it goes downward, these go out. If they both contract together, you don't go anywhere. You just get hard. In other words, you run into isometrics. Isometric means cancellation of function. In other words, you can conceive of this as a floor to the respiratory system, and by providing a powerful contraction, you can get the piccolo trumpet or you can get street trumpet, and you can have enormous pressure in the thoracic region, and it will not force the diaphragm down because the pressure under it is greater than the air pressure. So there you have stabilized. This is one of the reasons why the particular school of thought, uh, thought involving this powerful contraction is the stability that it gives uh, in the lower region, because this is a region of change, not stability. But it can't provide air pressure. Air pressure then, if you use pneumographic readouts, you'll find it's being established sternally. It's usually established in regions where they haven't taken much air. So you lose efficiency right there. But you've limited, because all of the muscles of the abdominal region go up this high in the body. They go well up into the rib cage. So this whole region goes out of function as far as change goes. If you don't need much air, like an oboe playing three liters per minute flow rate, five liters per minute flow rate, you can get by in long phrases with this. You can't get by in this if you need to have quantities of air and flow. There has to be change. So this particular school of keeping this, if you could say beneficially, as a floor can be better achieved simply by increasing the pull in, which will increase the intra-abdominal pressure until it matches the needs of the intrathoracic chest pressure. So the air in here then will move out by reduction, like a piston coming up under the lungs. The diaphragm, to do that, has to relax, not contract. In other words, a contracting diaphragm moves from high to low. Well, when you take breath in, the main muscle for lowering air pressure, if you want to look it up in an anatomy text, the chief muscle in the body for achieving low breath pressure is the diaphragm. And yet the tradition of thought is blow from the diaphragm. Well, this is a misnomer. You cannot blow from the diaphragm. This is to do with taking air in, not moving air out. Then you can say, yes, but I mean, well, then you, if you say, yes, what I mean, then that has changed the meaning of the phrase already. <laughs> so you blow with expiratory muscles, of which the abdominal muscles are expiratory. If you check it in Gray's Anatomy or any, but anything that gets smaller has to do with taking air, uh, moving air out. Anything that has to do with enlargement has to do with taking air in. It's that simple. <laughs> Thank you.